how about patience? Because people are so impatient with each other nowadays. Like patience know. is the third of those paramita yeah. virtues. And that's very important. And that's why I translated it as patient forbearance, mm -hmm. shanti in Sanskrit. The original book, How to Be a Bodhisattva, was written in Sanskrit mm -hmm. by Peace Master Shanti Deva a thousand years ago in India. So that's what we all use as like a manual, how to be a bodhisattva. And the third one, Shanti, is translated as patience, forbearance, tolerance, acceptance, um, resilience, like that. So turn the other cheek might be an example, but that's just an extreme example. Um, it might mean like if you're waiting online, being a little more touch with the bigger picture not just it's life or death, whether you make the red light. Mm. Well, life it's just death, whether you get into the theater, you know, before the other people, it's not life or death. Let's talk it's about something that's not. Important. So being in touch with the bigger picture, you know, you don't have to think about eternity to have that just like, oh, you know, even if we're late, you know, yeah, we miss the first, I hate missing the first few minutes of, let's say a movie or a game, but you know, it's not the end of the world. All right, so let's get through something that all of us are feeling, regardless of of who we the end are. Of the pandemic. Yes. How yeah. are we supposed to be paid? It's like really Omicron. Oh my God! You know, it's just this kind of. Oh, when will this ever end? So how do we how do we bring patience into this scenario? Well, there's no easy answers about what we're all going through as a culture and individually and families and the whole world really about this Omicron, the, the pandemic in general, and the variants and all this. But about this particular question about patience, I wanna say that it doesn't just mean biting your lip and not saying anything, or letting everybody else go first. Maybe you do, but maybe you just go when it's time to go. You don't have to be in their way, standing on the corner when they're trying to cross behind you, you know? Mm -hmm like appropriateness or balance or moderation, like skillful, appropriate, intelligent. That takes a little intelligence mm -hmm. with discriminating wisdom. This is where wisdom comes in. Every one of these six or 10 paramita virtues, these transformative practices, has wisdom as its eye guiding it with its different kind of actions. Morality seems like a different action than enthusiastic effort. Mm. But it's wise to be moral rather than immoral. It's wise to be patient rather than impatient. Well, sometimes you're impatient, that's okay. But if you cultivate wisdom, self-knowledge, mindful awareness, then you know when to be patient and when not. You know, Like sometimes if you have to hurry to get on the bus, you can't just walk slowly like you're meditating if you're gonna miss the bus. Unless right. you're willing to miss the bus, then walk slowly if you want. But it's okay to hurry. It doesn't mean, you know, you're, you're like outside of uh, the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Well, I think the patience that I see is on so, both sides. Yeah. So I you don't have to go in slow motion. You don't always have to be whispering. You don't always have to be a vegetarian. You know, none of these things alone does it all yeah Life well-rounded is, is is with others and there's alone and, and there's you know outer and inner life and there's all kinds of things you know what's good for the collective and what's good for the individual so you have to balance those things okay so let's actually not to not going into politics but hearing the two different sides that i've heard about vaccinations let One, me speak about the pandemic a little more because i didn't yeah. get to I was going yeah, i'm to sorry come, yes come back to that um, if we were wiser and wisdom needs to be cultivated, you know, if we, if we became, if we're becoming wiser, more self-aware, self, not narcissistic, but self-aware, self-conscious, not nervous, but, you know, like self-aware, conscious, um, intelligent, if we have more discrimination and discernment, if we look deeper, if we look at cause and effect, not just things in isolation, mm -hmm. then maybe we wouldn't have uh, sort of like naively been waiting for the end of the 
pandemic, you know, the first variant, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the epidemiologists and so-called experts, and I know the science is changing all the time and it's hard to sort out, but, you know, some of them have said, don't expect it just to be like, we're just going to go back to normal after we get vaccinated and we have herd immunity. I mean, anybody can see from the being, we're never going to have herd immunity. I mean, there's a whole globe to be concerned about, not just even our country or our continent. Mm. So that's one thing. So when is the pandemic going to be over? Nobody knows. And then the variant awareness came about. They started talking about it's morphing into other variants. So maybe there will now be going back to the way it was. Maybe the new normal, and I don't wish for this, I mean, I too look to stop, uh, forward to less masks and, you know, more freedom and less restrictions for all kinds of people, children, school kids, everybody. But maybe w there'll always be some COVID, like we found poli polio vaccinations, thank God, I think in the 50s. And yet there's still some polio in the world. Mm -hmm. So if we study the science of epidemiology, which I don't, but, you know, we're all like hearing these things. There's only one disease in the world mate, that's been wiped out entirely, that's smallpox. Mm. And that was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. mm. So it only exists in a few laboratories as a specimen. Mm. But all the other things we felt found out how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But they're not gone. So malaria is still there, you know, and dysentery that kills a lot of children in the third world is still there and all these things. So it's almost acceptance that this may be, this it is gonna be, be here forever. Normal. This is a new normal. So the more you kind of stop wrestling with, when will it be gone? When will my life be back to where it was? It's like, that's yeah. almost creating more suffering. It <laughs> is. A, let's look at the data. If and... we're more intelligent, we stop comparing all the time. You know, comparing and evaluating is fine in its place, but not all the time. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's like the kids that, are in school they're always comparing themselves to each other and they don't know who they are or can be and you know there's always somebody better you know what did they tell us on like the sports field there's always a bigger bear you know mm -hmm. don't think you're the biggest bear just because you're the biggest or oldest today yeah you know? like don't look for a fight they used to say it's in the cowboy movies there's always a faster gun yeah so there's always you know when kids i live near in cambridge there's there's the ivy league the kids with the 800 SATs, the valedictorians from their high schools all over the country come there, and there's all kinds of smarter people. Mm -hmm. That's life. Yeah. And But if we compare ourselves to what how we wish to be, like if we have a mentor or a role model or a code to live by, that's mm -hmm. different. Then it's not creating uh, irritation and dissatisfaction for ourselves. We just have a standard that we're trying to reach without judging ourselves against somebody else. Like, I wish I was them. Mm. Yeah, so we're comparing and judging what used to be when I didn't have to wear a mask, when I had, I was free. I didn't, you know, so, all right, so I want to ask another exist. So it's like, uh, I like sports and competitive and all, but it's beyond competitive. You're really playing against yourself to get better and have more fun. So like golfers are trying to beat their own best score not really the other people. Mm. All right, so I, I have a question about vaccines and 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 in, in a lot of ways- Why? Be no. our, our best selves and find a way to be that. And if we don't have self-knowledge, there's no way we can even have sight of that as a goal, mm -hmm. our best selves, whatever that means. That's why we have the Bodhisattva code. The Bodhisattva is like the model mm -hmm. of our best self in the Buddhist way. Like maybe in Christianity, it's Jesus, I don't know, or it's the saints, or it's something. Hard for me to say, I'm not learned in that. But in Buddhism, the Bodhisattva is the model of how to be by mm -hmm. practicing, cultivating, and growing in these six cardinal virtues called the paramitas, the transcendental virtues, the panacea virtues, the combined wisdom with the skillfulness of being patient. Mm -hmm of being mindful and attentive, concentrated, not scattered, mm. of being ethical, moral, you know, compassionate even, like politeness is compassion in society. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big on, you know, 
the rule book of politeness, but staying out of people's space and not staring and a million other little things is like compassion and action. Mm -hmm. Kind. You want your kids to learn that. Not to be uptight, but don't stare. Don't, you know, be in people's face. And other politenesses. All right, so and here's- now, uh, when, you, when you cough, it's a politeness. Now it's like a medical thing, but it's always been a politeness. Cover your mouth when you not cough, you know? There but, there, but there's two like kind of, so I'm gonna go back to vaccines. I know you're trying to dodge us, but I wanna ask anyways. Okay. It's fine, you wanna politicize, go ahead. I'm not gonna politicize this, I promise. No. But in some ways, you know, I'm, I've heard both sides, right? There's the um, get vaccinated so we can all get over this and, you know, not harm other people, elderly, et cetera. And then, so it's kind of a collective, like I care about the collective. Yes. And then there's an individual where it's like, I don't, this is not healthy for me. It's going to make me sick. You know, there's all sorts of theories on, it actually supports the collective belief of pharmaceutical companies are the only way. So, and, and I'm not even going to go into um, who's right, but to me, it seems like a balance between how you define harm and, and, and whose needs are more important, the individual or collective, and how do you reconcile these defi different definitions of collective harm and individual harm? Like this is individually harming me because it could make me sick and I don't believe in it. I can take alternative medicines. I don't believe in pharmaceuticals to, oh gosh, if you don't take this, you could kill my grandma. So it's like balancing individual and collective. And so let's not talk about the vaccine, but just generalize. No, it's a question of our day. Yeah, I don't. Good example, you know, but the environment's another example like the collective and the environment. If we don't take care of the environment, what's gonna to happen to all the individuals, whatever we believe or don't believe. But that depends if you believe in science. There are still, I don't know what, some tiny percent of people that don't believe in the environmental science about global warming and environmental degradation and humanity causing that. So, you know, but so with this, um, health what do you call it and social health global health you know public health it's very important to you know have some common denominator like you can't come in if you're not vaccinated that's not about who's right and who's wrong that's about you know like people the majority i don't know if it's a majority rule but going along with the science the majority Science is the religion of our time. So it used to be if you didn't go along with the religion of your country or of your whatever, you got in a lot of trouble. So now it's like that. So if you're willing to take the risk and get in trouble, not necessarily out of trouble, you know, not vaccinate, not vaccinate your kids, then, I mean, this has been going on for a long time. People have been worried. Look, I, I'm a 60s guy. I'm very familiar with the new age alternative things and I like those things also. There's been a lot of questions people used to say and worry about. Parents used to worry about vaccination and causing autism in children. So I think that's been pretty much disproved, but maybe not entirely, I don't know. And maybe there's just as good alternative therapies, medicines um, and other things, I don't know. But now we're talking about global uh, health, public health, and uh, pandemics, you know, things like influenza wiping out half of Europe in the 14th or 15th century, whatever it was, bubonic plague. That's a little different. Hmm. That's a little different. That's very hard to reconcile these days. But then there are intelligent people who don't believe in it. And then there's people who are from small government instead of big government, and they don't want to think, you know, have the government decide. They want their local decide. So this is not new issues. This is what we have to chew on. And I'll tell you, I don't know if this is a Buddhist slogan. This is my slogan lately. I'm right and I'm wrong. And, and the other side is right and wrong. And in between, there's a lot, you know, to look into. So you have to, it's like being your best self.
you have to mm. do the best you can. If you're worried about your children or your body, your health, you have to, you know, really study it and look into it. Let me let me go out on a limb here. More than most people are willing to. I think that's a big, you know, mm. with freedom comes responsibility. If you mm. want to do entirely for yourself, then you have to do a lot more re let's call it research. I'm not even throwing the word science in mm. research on yourself, your own habits, your own background, your own conditioning, you know, your own psychosomatic makeup. A lot of our issues are psychosomatic, mind made. Mm. Yeah, I get it. So what I'm taking away is there's a big US placebo effect that's been well studied. That placebo effect has a big effect on people, what you believe. Yeah. defines how much things affect you so if you with freedom comes responsibility to really become an expert yourself and a self-knowledge not just in, in one you know siloed pocket mm -hmm. about vaccines or about partisan politics who go both to what so i don't know what the answer is but i'm sure we're both right and we're both wrong and yeah. then as we love our children obviously you can do everything you can to do the best for them but I'm going to, again, go out on a limb here and put this in everybody's face. Just listen, are you really willing to go out on a limb and do what's best for you and not just follow along? Are you willing? Do you have the time and energy and means, you know, ability and stick to itiveness and smarts or whatever, emotional intelligence, whatever it takes to do what's best for you? And I'd say in the modern society, it's not that common, not just about vaccines. Mm -hmm. So many people, we were all looking for love in the wrong places and compensating for certain things with our addictive habits mm. and keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, the definition of insanity, but we keep doing the same thing, spinning our wheels, making the rut deeper, but expecting to get fit, go faster and get out of it. Mm. So that's where the wisdom whether it's transcendental wisdom or it's just like discernment. Yeah. You know, discriminating wisdom, awareness to what's actually happening. Clear. That's why I like to meditate and uh, practice self-inquiry and things like that. When I become clearer, everything becomes clearer. It's like clearing my windshield. Mm -hmm. If you drive with a dirty windshield, you can manage. But sometimes there's some water or some glare and then you lose the picture for a moment and anything could happen. So you try to clear your windshield and you try to clear your vision. If you see hazy, you try to get better, you know, you try to get glasses. Yeah, I, I mean, what I'm taking away from this is the real question is, how do you celebrate and respect individual needs, um, wants, desires? skills whatever and at the same time honor the collective and i think that that's a very and what yes. i'm taking what i'm getting from your answer is it all depends on the person so tune in look at the data which is the external facts the dharma of our time tune into your own internal wisdom and see what's right for you your family your loved ones all the circles around you and then I mean, so it's think about others, look at the data and then come up with your own answer. And, and, but then what, what I think what is, is missing, but I think I can infer from your answer. So what if, what if the collective, you know, the collective is like, well, you're not supporting the collective in your answer. It's like, well, I have a different definition of the collective and what the collect and who's in yes. these members of the collective. That's why we're all right, we're all wrong. Yeah, and to be you open know, to for it. For example, so. it's yeah. not majority rule in the spiritual world. So I we, I don't think about who, what religion or anything is right or wrong, but you know it's not majority rule. So maybe you're in the minority, the religious or political. You know, political and democracy is majority rule, but maybe not in some other forms of social organization. So maybe, you know, maybe the, uh, the innovators are right. You know, the personal computer people broke the mold out of the big computers and, you know, made a revolution. And now we're living with that for better and for worse. But, you know, a lot of progress. 
interpersonal, which is good for the collective. But yeah. IBM didn't see it that way at the time. Mm. They did investors, so the guys had to invent it in their garage, not at MIT and the government sponsored, you know, Lincoln Labs that does MIT's military research here. Mm. So they had two guys had to drop out of college and do it in their garage and other people were doing it too. So just an example, you know, um, the Buddha said when I, he was enlightened, all were enlightened. So that's like beyond time. Mm. But I would translate that at, that's the, when I would, about cosmic consciousness and oneness, because it's not as simple or, as we're either one or the many, it's also both and neither. So the mm. individual and the collective is like a warring dualistic polarities mentality. There's also the both and the neither. Mm. So what I would translate when I was enlightened, all were enlightened, to when I'm clear, everything is clearer. It mm. doesn't mean everything has changed, but I have a better way of dealing with it, for sure. Mm. I like but, that. It helps yeah. me gain patience with people, Check too. It it, yeah, yeah, it really helps me with patience. So... I am right. Yeah. Everything is askew. I might be having a good time, but I shouldn't be driving or, you know, doing other things. Yeah. Cool. All right. So on January 5th, you're going to be um, coming to East West Bookstore, which is our Seattle books, our beloved Seattle bookstore um, on January 5th, coming and talking. So um, any, any virtually, virtually. So go to eastwestbookshop.com and sign up for the event. And the, can people find it on your website too? Yes. Okay, excellent. On my Which website, is... www.surya.org. Got, got it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all. I love the Pacific Northwest where the green Buddha lives. We love you too. 